Prognosticator, winter weather, spring weather for the next six weeks. It is wonderful to have everyone here today. The members welcome you because this program is about celebrating life and the future, and what we all have in common, and that is the, the desire to relax rationally. <laughs> We're coming to you live this morning from the Chateau de White Rock, along the banks of the beautiful Octorera Creek, the only freshwater tributary that enters directly into the Chesapeake Bay, that's a fact, just as we are the only real prognosticator. <laughs> and we're being broadcast throughout the United States and 67 countries. We have a viewing population today that exceeds Elvis Presley's viewing population in 1973 when he broadcast live from Hawaii. <laughs> and for you babies, Elvis Presley was a singer. <laughs> Very popular singer. You're going to see some wonderful things here today in our lineup. We have Groundhog John Gerber, who's going to sing the national anthem. The Groundhog Day song. We're going to hear the Groundhog Creek, as it's presented by the one and only Ron Miller. Then we're going to tantalize Ron with the footsies and the invitations of the Groundhog Creek. We're going to have reports from the squad, answer the reports, and our governor, Tony Hart, is going to make the prognostications. <laughs> Stands, one nation, under God, 
I give you John Gerber. to be of a higher order than that of any other animal, from the tick of the blackberry to the elephant of the jungle. Yeah, that's right. Tell him, Ron. Yeah, you got it. We yeah. rejoice that he can and does. We tell with absolute accuracy. The weather conditions will sink to call each second day. Never. Yeah. 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 We rejoice further that he is.
Here comes a cigar followed by Denny Sneeze. The light and fanciful feet of Denny Sneeze. Australia, uh, it's an honour to be here to the Hibernating Governors, the members of the uh, Slumbery Lodge, and in particular uh, the, a local legend by the name of Mr. Keith Vitalik, who uh, is uh, instrumental in uh, everything I've done today. So thank you to Keith and his lovely family for uh, welcoming my wife here, and you lovely people. This has made my day, it's made my uh, year in Australia. Good day, guys, and this is truly So many perfect heads, and they're in the members of the balding booth. <laughs> Governors, the balding booth squad, with our perfect heads, got around to welcome Orphy from his slumber. Our magnanimous hog, Orphy, is on his 115 year of showing the world what the weather will be for the next six weeks, following this magnanimous day, the 2nd of February. Orphy does this with absolute accuracy, without compensation or commercial contracts, selflessly, unlike the other hog. 
You may ask, what does ORFI stand for? Outstanding, reliable predictions with honesty, integrity, and excellence. The other hog, poor, horrendous, inept lies. Page two, it took a little bit. Recently, it has come to light the other hog had in his summer vacation hole in Delaware numerous classified documents. This is where his son, P. Hunter, has been staying. Our squad thought that we should spend years and millions of dollars investigating this. But our magnanimous hog, Orphy, asked us to save the time and money of this great nation to go about our business predicting the weather through him instead. Once again, Orphe, with his wisdom, led us on the right path. Orphe awoke from his slumber and came from his hole and didn't see a shadow, Governor. That's the Baldy uh, Food Squad's uh, report. Did or did not? What? Did or did not? Did not. Did. Shell Belt Squad Report. Once again, our trip to the Shell Belt was long and cold. 25 miles an hour and bitching, I'm stuck with a squad that's gotten too old. These old guys were whining and groaning and sneaking a few nips 
All they talked about was prostrates and plastic hips. <laughs> but we are the proud shell felt squad at this grandest of chateaus. We stood our post bravely into the night, breathing diesels and toes. Yes, old they may be, but blessed with advanced education, there is no crew better at the art of octomanciferal predification. Here, here, I nailed it. Alas, Refton turned out sunny and balmy this mag temporal day. They were all doing spring cleaning up Shell Belt Way. We strolled to Orphy's place in sandals and shorts, relaxing most rationally as we wrote our reports. Our pertinacious hero emerged at 5.04 a.m. in a huff, turned around three times, did not see his shadow, went back in his hole, said he'd seen enough. Governor Orphy did not see his shadow. Here, here. Here, here. Hey, hey. All right, you can pull it down. still green. Fall turned to winter, not much snow to talk about. Warm temps brought lower heating bills. We will not pout. Last night the Snoop Squad was called to the lodge. The front door was ajar. The whole squad entered the building except John Whiteside. He stayed in his car. It was the FBI looking for classified documents. <laughs> Nothing was found. What they did find was John Zook, with lots of bullshit abound. <laughs> with all the commotion, Orphy rose from his slumber, went right to the top fence rail, a new piece of lumber. Looking around, seeing lots of green to eat, came down from the fence pole, these warm temps are hard to beat. There is no need to go back to the hole, Bring on the Eagles and the Super Bowl. Yeah. We aren't perfect, boys, but we are dandy. <laughs> uh, hey, Dill Pickle. Dill Pickle. But here we go. Good morning, governors, fellow hogs, and esteemed guests. We, the Puddle Ducks Squad, are ready to inform you of our annual report. As many of you know, the job of the Puddle Duck Squad is to inform the perfect prognosticator, Dr. Eric Orphy, of the surrounding weather conditions outside the Sons, his home in southern Lancaster County. In fact, his record of 115 years of perfect forecasting is attributed not only to his instincts, but data provided by this squad. As we gather the surrounding conditions, we've noticed a drought in San Francisco, a 20-year drought much like their supposed football team. As we traveled south, 
we noticed the swelling in the riverbanks in Dallas, Texas. Some attribute this annual event to the stinking football team, as in as we made our way northward, we discovered the reason for our unusually warm weather this year. With no measurable snows to date, there seems to be a lot of hot air coming out of Washington, D.C. Specifically, the 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue address. <laughs> At, after returning home and sharing this information with the great prognosticator, we ask him, who you got in the Super Bowl? Now, very few people know this, but the great one is also 54 and 0 in Super Bowl picks as a side gig. His response was short but direct. Your fellow feathered cousins in the sky, the Eagles will prevail 42-27. His words, not mine, respectfully submitted the the aisle many, many times, Bob Cobbler. Sir, it's Brian Cobbler. Hey, Bob! Oh, Brian. Oh, yeah, I also brought along our new senator from nearby thriving Brockport, Ron Fetterman. <laughs> Fetterman, you suck! Good morning. Both Joan and I... Sir, it's Jill. Oh, that's right, Jill. It's an honor to be back at the Croaking Frogs. It's a slumbering groundhog lodge, Mr. President. Oh, that's right. I've been asked to provide a weather prediction by my dear friends, the Puddle Ducks. Birds are sure. Okay, Jane. That's Jill. That's correct. Is not able to be with me today. She's judging a gourmet cooking contest at the elegant J&B Hotel in nearby Holtwood. In her place, I'm proud to have the brightest guy I know and one heck of an artist, my son Hunter. He's a good guy. Don't listen to that darn Fox News or Jing Bing Tang in China or whatever the hell his name is. I must say, Harvey and I, I love you, Bob Hunter, sir. Are very appreciative of the security provided by the infamous Poop Squad. Snoop Squad. That's right, Snoop. None of it sucks. Take it easy. He's a good Democratic boy. I truly am happy to be here. Those pesky, pesky Republicans say I don't go near the southern border. Well, here I am. Mr. President, the Pennsylvania southern border. Well, it's still a border, right? Judy and I. Sir, it's Jill. That's right, Jill. Thank you for having us here at the American Legion. Go back to Scranton, Bob. Go back to Scranton. Your prediction. Oh, yeah, I need to predict the weather. 
<laughs> I think I left the thing in my damn garage with my vet. Hot <laughs> car for an old senile guy, don't you think? Any bad weather would be that darn Putin's fault and then global warming nuts. Mr. President, you are one of the global warming nuts. Okay. Uh, it's going to get warm soon. In closing, Joanne, Hector, and I are happy to be here at the Lampeter Fair. God bless America. Repeat the line. God bless America. And the Smuggling Frogs Lodge. Don't trip, Biden! second of May. The days will start to grow warmer as spring is right around the corner. Well, there it is. There's the official word. Let the world, re let the world respond accordingly. We're the first, we're the only, and we're the accurate. I now turn the program over to the class of 2015 for further entertainment and enlightenment. Thank you, Defender of the Faith. Good morning. 
This not-so-featured presentation is brought to you by the class of 2015. So, without any further ado, ladies, gentlemen, and brother groundhogs, through the powers of hookery boogery and a broken ass Ouija board, we will summon old George Hensel to see what he'd think of things nowadays. Who in the hell woke me up from my eternal slumber? Well, George, me and the boys were drinking one night and we got to thinking, what would George think about things nowadays? Well, let me look around here and see if I recognize anybody. Well, there's old Carl Reynolds. How'd you stick around so long? Just kick, him out. Just kick him out of the way, Mikey. <laughs> Carl. Go first. Actually, I'd, I'd be flattered to be called Carl, and I'm guessing back in the day, if there was a Baldy Boot Squad, he might have been a Baldy Booter. But if you did your math, my granddad, Carl, was born in 1901, so if he were still around, he'd be 122 right now. You look good for 122. That would be great. So, George, uh, what do you think of your old store? What is Paul Risk Construction? Uh, it's a construction company that took over the Atlantic gas station in 79. That gas station, unfortunately, tore down your store in 59. By the way, you were the owner but do you consider yourself more of a manager or a supervisor? Neither. And I don't like to start we're off to. Well, me neither, but here we are. What? Uh, Jay-Z. There he goes. have been made to medicine. Maybe I can stick around a little longer. Well, let's ask Chris. He's a surgeon. <laughs> well, where's your doctor's bag? Well, we don't use doctor bags anymore. <laughs> you can't be serious. Yes, I am serious. Actually, nowadays it takes months sometimes for insurance companies to approve necessary procedures. What does insurance companies have to do with healing anybody? Well, it's a little too complicated to get into that right now. Rest assured, rest assured Jim Lunny sells motorcycles. And that's my insurance, because as long as motorcycles are around, my kids are going to go to college. <laughs> Hey kids, uh, can you say something about insurance? I'm more into sales. Take for example this trike. It isn't perfect, but it's a dandy. Why do you need insurance to ride one of those? <laughs> we well, need insurance to ride one of those. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> 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 you'll be surprised what you can pick up one of these bad boys. <laughs> 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 <la
Bruce Branger chasing Fat Jack. Did you see that hog? Boy, that really gets me going. I see a few hogs today. She needs a shave. Is that what people look like when they go go shop, go grocery shopping today? Well, a lot do, especially the women since the pig belly is 17. <laughs> what are they looking at? Well, it's their cell phones, their portable telephones. They do lots of things. Well, what? Is that boy a monk? No, he's wearing a hoodie. <laughs> What's a fancy hat on? Well, they're called sweatpants or uh, active wear, although the, the most people who wear them usually aren't that active. I believe that boy just soiled his active wear. <laughs> On that note, I think I'm out of here. Yeah, the crowd is hoping so too, I believe. There's one thing that we can still all agree on, and that is Orphe is still mad! Yes. Great job, guys. Hey, best get ever. Best, best get ever. ever. Best get I ever. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. Thanks. Oh, my God. That was awesome. Thank you, Davey. Thank you. Hey, I thought you should be wearing a helmet. Oh, that's right. They got rid of those walls. Oh, look. Look, we got everything. We got everything. Oh, look. Oh, there's no cheat sheets there. Hey, but half of you aren't wearing the glasses to read them. Well, well, a well-oiled machine, boys.
Time today? Yes, we are. Yeah. Cool. What's this event all about? Beautiful day. Yep. Beautiful day. Perfect. My first one. Don't mind me, just keep oh, yeah. keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Who do I have to film? Oh, baby grandma. Oh, yes. I don't want to go to school tonight. Oh, what is it? Oh, baby grandma. That's a good reason to be here. Yep. You see Barry? I have not. Okay. He, the only one I saw was um, Harry. Harry. Cool. Yeah. I saw Harry. Did you see them for another second? The was a chief was great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, what'd you think of the event, man? Come on, tell me something. Well, it was great. Yeah. Had a good skit. 
Uh, very enlightening. Very enlightening skit. Had a uh, great weather, good friends. Um, spring is right around the corner. Spring's right around the corner. Good Can't news argue all that. around. Yep. Great. Cool. That's pinky. Yes, it has been quite a morning here in Lancaster County, and Orphy made his prediction just a minute ago, and what was his prediction? Bring it right around the corner. That is Charlie. He is a hibernating governor here at the Slumbering Lodge, and what does that mean? What does a hibernating governor mean? Well, the hibernating governor, the chairman, uh, oversees a board of ten hibernating governors who govern the lodge. Governor the Lodge, so, and we had quite a party here this morning. You know, what goes on over there? You find out like right away. Well, there's a lot of work. So you find out like time off. So they're like, uh, getting everybody together, getting everybody together, uh, together, getting everybody together uh, to do the reports and everything. 
I think I could imagine. Yeah, but thank you all so much for letting us come out here this morning. Let's set it back to the studio now. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, you. you. <laughs> all right, Jimmy. All righty. <laughs> the jig. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Okay, the jig. On so they, one of the members has to dance on a wooden plank thing or yeah. like wooden platform. Yeah. Um, they want me to do it. Do you know how to do it? No, no. <laughs> I was watching. It, it, was, it was something. He was doing something with his feet. I, I don't know. I don't know how to do the. Well, jig. you have to do, have the board. I have to have the board. I can't just do it on grass, Sean. I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Next year. Next year. Next year. So what a great. <laughs> Did you need a first light? 